Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Tonight's going to be another blog. Now I'm almost at 500 subscribers and I was looking at my past videos and saw that my do-it-yourself G1W stealth mod video was my most popular. So I didn't really have anything to talk over the first part of this video so I thought I'd just revisit some of this old footage. I just find it sort of funny how poor my earlier videos were. Some of my videos I actually deleted because they were so bad, including several reviews. I actually revisited a few reviews though. So anyways, this video is going to be another update on my car, what cameras I use, what products I use in my car, and also my travel kit because I released that travel kit video recently, but soon after I actually switched to another box, so I thought I would give an update on that. Now I did want to address something. I am getting a lot of questions lately and that's obviously going to happen the more subscribers and viewers I get, but I do want to assure people that I do read your comments. I try to answer as many as I can. Sometimes I read them on my phone or in my email and I just never get around to it. So if I don't answer your question, please don't take offense to it. Uh, I would suggest going to dashcamtalk.com if you have any unanswered questions because there's plenty of people there that are willing to help you out there also. And while I do use a lot of different different cameras, I am creating these videos more for entry level people. So I am using a lot of cameras for only a month at a time sometimes. Sometimes only two or three weeks. So I'm not going to be the most knowledgeable person on every single camera. But I'm going to try my best to respond to any questions I can answer. Another thing I wanted to update you guys on is what product reviews I do have coming up. So I do have the brand new Blackview DR650 GW1 channel. So that's just like the DR650 2 channel version which is what I personally run in my car in the front. But it only has the front lens so it doesn't have the small rear camera so ideally it should have better video quality than the front camera of the DR650 2 channel. The other camera I am testing right now is the Papago 520. So look for those videos pretty soon. But let's go ahead and get to the main meat of this vlog. It's gonna be my, like I said, my car and the current hardware I'm running and also my travel kit that I updated recently. So if you're a new viewer or you just haven't seen some of my other videos, I do run more than four cameras in my car at any given time because I do run two two-channel Blackview cameras at all times. And now I also have a fifth camera recording inside of my car and an extra front-facing camera. So let's go ahead and take a look at what all, all these cameras are that I'm running. So the very first camera I ever bought was the DR550GW2 channel from Blackview. So that's the rear camera right there, and that's actually in my passenger window. As you can see, that's the top of the door frame. So that records the side, and you can see there, with some reflections, it's actually pretty hard to see, especially at night. And then the main 550 camera is in the back. There you can see I have that cell lot new light also. Then here we got another rear channel camera in the driver's side, same, same location, but on the driver's side door, and that's the DR650. So I bought the 650 when I first started uploading reviews, and I decided to just go ahead and drop quite a lot of money on it brand new when it first came out. And now I use both of them as a four channel setup. So here you can see I wired it through the weatherproofing. And on the outside, just like the other side, it's pretty well hidden even without anything blocking it. Now up front, you'll see there's two cameras there. That's the 650 Blackview and then the Street Guardian. There you can see this is the radar detector I use. I typically only use it on weekends. Here we got the Street Guardian SG9665GC, which is my spare front camera. It actually has better video quality than my 
black view and I really just like having a second backup camera anyways so there's the main black view 650 2 channel and again here is the other new black light it's a LED security light if you haven't seen what it does here's a quick demonstration if you hit the car it flashes the light so that way if you're in a dark parking lot and someone bumps into your car it's gonna flash the light and hopefully light up their license plate light and light enough so your cameras can pick it up if you have a camera with parking mode like the black view so powering all these cameras was a little tricky at first but here you can see I do actually have a cigar adapter with three plugins mounted in my glove box and this is what actually connects to my street guardian up front and then the two extra ports are typically for any other cameras I'm testing for review purposes so that cord comes up through the roof liner and here I got a cell link B battery with the expansion also and this powers both my 650 and 550 Blackview cameras with all the cameras I have it does put quite a lot of pressure on my car battery so these allow my cameras to record when my car is parked and off for a longer period of time and here you can see I got a couple switches under my driver's side door to turn them off manually if I don't want them on when my car is off that way it saves the cell link and car batteries power so with this system I rigged up I'm able to keep the batteries out of the way pretty hidden and still have full control over if I want them to record or not while my car is parked. Now under my passenger side seat I have a T-Power Plus Alpha and that powers the Street Guardian ZC12RC. Here you can see there's a screen on it. It's actually a remote lens camera. So I have all these cords wrapped up and this allows it to record inside of my car while I'm driving and while I'm parked. And that way, if something happens inside my car, or if someone breaks into my car, it's going to record. And just like the other side, it fits under the car seat, so it's very well hidden and out of the way. So the lens of the camera is in my dashboard, so I did actually take my dashboard apart to install this remote lens camera facing me, the driver, so it records the entire inside of the car including outside the driver's side window and passenger side window so this could be useful in a traffic stop and with the T-Power Plus and the motion detection of the camera it can actually record anyone getting into your car now this camera is actually always buffering the last five seconds when it's in motion detection mode so there you can see I showed up on screen five seconds after it triggered the motion detection and saved the last five seconds plus the next 25 seconds or however long it senses motion. So this could be a really good camera for parking mode. This could also make a really good camera for taxi drivers or Uber drivers because if you install it somewhere on your dashboard even without doing it as intricate as I did it can record the whole inside of your car. So here's my new travel kit. So I actually already had this box in my car and I realized I had two separate different waterproof boxes so I decided to combine them. This basically includes everything I would bring with me when I'm driving a work vehicle or if I'm on a road trip with someone else. My main travel camera is actually a Mobius but here's a couple extension USB cables. here's the Mobius Type-C camera that I use with a magnetic mount. This is a radar detector suction cup mount. Here's a power cable for the Mobius mini USB and it's really long with a velcro strap to keep it all organized. Here's the USB adapter in case I don't happen to have one or someone else doesn't have one in their car. And just in case I also have this micro USB cable. So here's the little kit that came with the Mobius and the battery. So one of my Mobius cameras I 
put a supercapacitor in, so that was the battery that came out of it. The one in this kit actually has a battery though, because sometimes I use it unplugged actually. Here's just a memory card reader. So here's just a short cable in case I want to do data transfer but don't want to use a really long cable. This has been useful for me. Here's a couple adapters, both 90 degree angles, different directions with full size USB. So that way I can use the extensions and say I wanted to mount it in the back of a really long SUV like a Suburban, that way I can make sure to reach it. So here's my all power rechargeable battery that can jump start my car in case the battery is dead. Also has those two USB ports to charge phones or tablets. Then we got a flashlight on the side also. Couple different flash modes. So with these jumper cables you can connect it to the battery and jump start your car. That way you don't need to call AAA or call a friend or family if you're stuck on the side of the road with a dead battery. These are very useful. Here's just a lens cover, another lens cover, both of those were for my black views. Here's another adapter for micro USB, OTG cable, USB on the go. So with a USB OTG cable you can connect something like a camera to a tablet or cell phone and that way the cell phone or tablet acts as the host device. So it's sort of like when you connect your phone to your computer, your PC, the PC acts as the host device and you can transfer files from the phone to the computer or vice versa. So it can become useful if you use a phone with OTG support. Here's another little cloth. Here's a bunch of different adapters for the battery charger. That way you can charge any type of phone vir virtually. It didn't come with a lightning adapter though, but you can just use a lightning cable and connect it to any of the USB ports. So I did just do a review on this DB power rechargeable battery and I'm probably actually going to use this instead of my all power battery because it does have a couple features I really like. So here you can see there is a red light on the top. So when you double tap the power button, it flashes blue and red. Now it might not show up very correct on this video, but it is blue and red. And we got the flashlight on the side with a couple different flashing modes, just like the other one, or the all power battery. But overall, I really do like that flashing red and blue light on the top because that could be a very useful hazard light if you're stuck on the side of the road at night or even during the day because it's really bright. So anyways, that's my vlog for tonight. I'm going to leave you with one of my terrible original unboxings when I didn't even have a simple tripod. I'm still using the same iPhone that I have been recording with this whole time. but. At least at this point, I do have a tripod. Now down in the description, I am going to include any of the reviews for the products featured in this video. Also I'm going to provide links to where you can purchase these. Some of these products, I do actually have coupon codes for my viewers, especially for my YouTube channel. So check the description down below. All of these products featured in this video are products I really do support and believe are good quality products, even this G1WC actually, for beginners or newcomers. So check the description down below. Anyways, thanks for watching, drive safe, and I'll see you next time.